So the first thing that we will cover is the insertion. The insertion, the syntax is simply insert into the particular relation name, let us say R, values which forms of the values, the tuples that is formed. So an example is, you can say, essentially this means 12 is the account number, B, uh, DEF is the branch name and uh, 100 is the balance. So this tuple gets inserted into the account table. If the schema is obvious, that means if the schema of account is actually A number, B name and balance, then this can be omitted, but uh, it, it can be. And instead of 100, etc., a particular value is not known and null can be also inserted, provided balance is nullable. I mean, if the condition, remember that uh, while we were setting up the table name, we can define certain attributes as whether they can allow null values or not. If they allow null values, then this is fine, otherwise there will be errors. Now one thing is that insertion can also be, uh, so the value of a query can also be used to insert into a table. So for example, this can be done, what essentially does is that it creates a new account with the balance 20, so the balance is always set to 20, at this branch DEF for every loan, for every loan, wherever there is a loan, it creates an account and the account number is set to the same as the loan number. So this is a way of inserting as part of the, so this is essentially a query which is first solved then all the values are inserted into the account. Now the one thing is that the query must be evaluated fully before the insertion starts as otherwise there can happen infinite insertions can happen. So very easy example is the following. So suppose you want to duplicate a relation for whatever reasons it's not very clear why but suppose you want to do that so you can write as queries simply insert into R select star from R. Now imagine what will happen if this is not being done. So this must be evaluated first. So and then all the results are inserted into it. So this is only done once. So this essentially duplicates the relation. So that, I mean duplicates the tuples in the relation. Nothing. Like that. So then uh, we can move on to deletion. The syntax is delete from relation where there is a predicate. So you delete from the relation R where the predicate is correct. So example is, so essentially the account number 12 is deleted. And if the where is empty, so if you simply say delete from account, the same rule is uh, applied. If the where part is empty, then it means true which means every tuple will be deleted from account. So it, at the end of this, it returns an empty relation, nothing else is. And just like insertion, delete can also, you can use a query as part of this delete thing. So only where the query is, uh, query is evaluated and only those tuples that satisfy the query can be, are deleted. And an uh, interesting example in this space is the following. Once more, so what it tries to do is it deletes all accounts where the balance is less than the average. Now again, once more the balance must, the average must be computed first and then the deletion happens. Otherwise, it will keep on deleting. You can see what will happen. Finally, there is this updating. The syntax is update relation R set certain values set uh, attribute uh, lists, etc. So set uh, attribute lists equal to some function of whatever, some other attribute list. So set ai is equal to function of ej, where p, so there's a predicate. An example is, so what this tries to do is, every account where the balance is greater than some amount 1000, 8% uh, interest is given. So the balance is essentially incremented by 8%. So this can be done. Once more, where if the where is empty, then it evaluates to true. So that means everything will be done and so on and so forth. That's the same issues as far. And again, uh, it depends on how you're doing. So again, this can be a query of which is first evaluated and then this thing is done. And there can be case, so there, there is a case clause that can be used, which is essentially equal to the switch case kind of thing. And uh, we can see the syntax later. So this uh, does the basic queries and the 
database modifications are complete, we will next do so the another very important topic next. So we will next cover the join in SQL. So join, as we saw, there are different types of join, inner join, Then there is a left join, which essentially means it's a left outer join, right join, full join, natural join. These fall in one group. The natural join falls in another group. A particular join can also be said can be set on a particular predicate and then it can be also said using which attribute. So the on is on the predicate and using is the attribute. So these are the different ways one can join. So for example, we can say loan inner join borrower on you can specify the condition which is loan dot loan number is equal to borrower dot loan number. Now this is equivalent to saying this is loan natural join borrower. This is again equivalent to saying loan join borrower ok I am sorry this should be natural inner join and this is loan inner join using L number so all these three queries are equivalent and there are different ways of stating so the natural inner join is the same as the inner join on that number because it's the same attribute value. So it is essentially if you say using real number, it essentially translates to this condition and this which is the same as writing it down explicitly on. And this is the natural inner join as well. So an example of join maybe so following can be one way of solving it. Now do remember there are different ways in which a particular query can be solved. Uh, there are different uh, equivalent SQL statements that can be written that will solve the same query. So here is one way of doing it. From, this is what I am writing it down, so depositor natural full join borrower where a number is null or l number is null. Now this requires a little bit of thought. So what it is being done is the following is that first of all this depositor natural full join borrower this will create every possible combination of depositor and borrower. So it will find out all customers. Now this is a natural full join. So when you say natural join, the depositor and the borrower table, they agree on the customer name. So it must have that when you joining the depositor and borrower, they must be the same customer name. So it will find out all for each customer name, the account number and the L number. Okay. Now, so even if there is an account number but not corresponding L number, because it's a full join, it will output there. Now what do we want is that we want those kind of things where there is either an account number or an L number. So at least one of them is null. So that is why this is an OR clause. So at least one of them. So if a customer has both account number and L number, then both will be valid. So this will be false. So that is not going to be output. So this is the way to solve find customers having an account or don't, but not both. So this uh, completes the uh, part about SQL, uh, etc. And uh, so there are some more constructs in SQL, some a little uh, bit of construct that we will cover next. So some important other constructs of SQL, the first one is a view. So a view is the answer of a query that is not present physically. So this is not 
present physically, but answer of a query expression. So, for example, essentially a view is a view can be considered as a virtual relation. An example. So, uh, why are views needed? Views helps in query processing. An example may be the following is that suppose this is being done. So, create view. So, this is a syntax to create a view V as you say. So, what does this view tries to do is find all the loans of the customer, but, uh, but it will, it does not bother about the loan amount. Okay. So, if we go to this uh, example, so, so this is the view. So, this view can be later used anywhere where this is use, useful. So, if we do the following thing, so suppose select star from V where branch name is equal to DF. So, you want the names of all customers who have an account at the DEF branch, well, that is it. So, you, this view V is essentially this uh, the part of this query. So, this is essentially the same as uh, writing select star from then this entire thing will go here, entire thing will go here, this here where the same clause is being done. So, important thing to note is that how are views stored? A view as I said is not stored physically. So, what is being stored is the query expression is being stored. So, what is stored is this following query expression. So, wherever v is used, it is actually replaced by the query equivalent query expression. So, this is the query expression. So, it is actually being replaced by the query expression and at run time, this query is evaluated and the entire answer is resulted. So, why is uh, such a case done? The reason is when the view is used, the relation that it uses the view from may have changed. So, for example, if we go back to the query that we see, this create view v uses the following tables borrower and loan. Now, if you store this as a table, if borrower and loan has changed, there is no way the view v will know that change. On the other hand, if only the query expression is stored, then it is fine because if borrower and loan changes, it does not matter. This is evaluated again at query time, at run time. So, nothing else is problem. So, that is why there are restrictions as to what can be done, which kind of views can be done and whether a view can be updated, etc. A view may not be updated because updating a view essentially means updating the borrower and the loan tables, right? which is not clear how to update and it may get into the problems of null tuples, null values and all those things. For some views, there is a term called materialization. So, some views are materialized. So, this depends on the query engine, etcetera, the database engine. So, when some views are materialized, it essentially means the view is stored physically, is physically stored. Now, why will that be done? When the view is simple enough, etc., and when the view is used in multiple queries, then it makes sense to materialize the view because then this following query is not going to be evaluated at runtime, etc. So, that is the view materialization issue. And otherwise, the view is not very much updatable, etc. Fine. So, the last topic that we will cover in this uh, SQL is something called a trigger. So, a trigger, so we, let me write it down what a trigger is. A trigger statement allows automatic management of database stuff. So, here is a, so it is so it's a automatic, so, so whenever some action takes place in one, pa, one relation, automatically some other statements take place and it trigger, essentially it triggers a couple of things. So, for example, whenever a grade is uh, submitted, for example, in the, in the example of student databases, whenever a grade for a particular course is submitted, the CGPI of the student is automatically recalculated and that is being stored. So, that can be written as a trigger. So, whenever a new grade is inserted, there is a trigger that will automatically recompute the CGPI. 
So it essentially follows what is called an event condition action model. So this is the ECA model. So whenever an event happens, it checks for certain conditions. If that is true, the uh, corresponding action is being taken. So the event is essentially a database modification, so such as insertion, updates, or deletion, etc. The condition is a predicate, and the action is any, any other database action, or some even external programs can be done, etc. And the action can be done either before or after the event. So this is a modification event. So the action can be specified as a before action or an after action. So generally, these are after actions, but it can be also specified as a before action. So for example, we can think of the following query. So create trigger. So it says a create trigger. You can say update. The name of the trigger, you can give something. Say Let us say update B name. This is the trigger. After, so this says that, OK, after that, this is the after model. So when the event has taken place after that, after update of branch name on branch. So then you can say how this update will be done for, so what is the action that can be taken? So for each row, when B, C, T is equal to A, B, C, you say you have the begin. There is a begin and end statement update account in the following manner. Set B name is equal to new dot b name where b name is equal to old dot b name so this is the end so this example covers a lot of issues so let me go over them one by one so it first says create a trigger the name of the trigger is update b name fine it says after, so that means it's an after event. After, what is the event? Update of branch name on branch. So whenever there is an update of branch name on branch, this uh, trigger is essentially invoked. Now, how it is done? So that the trigger is applied for each row. Only when the branch CT is ABC, this is the condition on the trigger, so it's not for everything on the branch. Then what is the action that is being taken? Is that the account table, the account relation is updated in the following manner. The branch name is set to the new branch name for those things where it was the old branch name. So this new and old are essentially special markers, so which says in the, because it's an update event, so this, the new branch name is got from here and the old branch name is got from whatever was already in the database. So this is an example of how to work with the trigger. So this completes the part of SQL, so we have covered about uh, all the basic operators, we have covered nested subqueries, we have covered the updates, the deletion, insertion, etc., and some special issues in SQL, which are the views and the triggers.